Okay, we're recording. Okay, so I'm going to do my introduction and then uh, we'll get into it. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm fixing yeah, my face. It's like a job interview. I know. It's not a job interview. All right. All right. Good afternoon from Mexico. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So there has been a lot going on lately, but a few weeks back, I asked you guys if, uh, if you had any questions for my family that's in the States and surrounding our move to Mexico and, and things like that. So today I'm sitting down with my little sister, Nicole. So say hi to everybody. <laughs> this is my little sister, Nicole. Um, and we're going to go through the questions that you guys left in the community. Now, before we get into all of that, uh, please make sure that you subscribe, turn on notifications. You can also follow us on all of our social media links. They're all in the description below. And don't forget to drop your questions um, or you can send an email and, and we're more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. So uh, to start off with, this is my little sister to this side, this is Nicole. Uh, Nicole lives up in the States and I see, I already feel like I'm going to cry. So, um, one of the hardest parts for me moving to Mexico obviously was leaving behind my friends and family. Um, and so I like that Nicole has, uh, offered to sit down with me to do this so that you guys can get an idea of, of what my family is like, um, how they feel about Fidel and all of the events surrounding our move to Mexico. So, uh, Nicole, I guess let's start with you telling everybody here on YouTube a little bit about yourself. Uh, <laughs> so I'm the middle child. Uh, there's three of us, if you didn't know. Candace and I, I don't, I don't know, we've always, in our adult life, we've been best friends <laughs> as children growing up. We were in our adult little, life, definitely, crazy. not not as children. <laughs> One as children. Not we were sisters as um, children. <laughs> right, right. Uh, like she said, I live in the States. I have a little boy that's Dominic's age, which I haven't heard these questions yet, but I'm sure we're going to touch on that. Um, married, uh, full time working mom. Yeah, I don't know. What else? You can't, you about? can throw out your impressive degrees. I mean, you did work hard oh. for them. <laughs> Um, I have a couple degrees. I'm a behavior analyst. I'm also a licensed school counselor. I currently work with uh, autism or toddlers with autism spectrum disorder. Um, the school counseling degree I haven't used just because I got into ABA. And yeah. All right. <laughs> so there's a little bit about my little sister. So now you guys, I feel like you guys have a better idea of her. <laughs> Um, and we got our looks from our mothers in case anybody's oh, wondering. Definitely. All right. <laughs> definitely all of this from our mom. Um, all right. So I guess we'll just jump right into the questions. Now I'm going to be reading these questions off of my phone, but I do want to read the, uh, the, the usernames if they have them. Um, so let's jump to the first one. Um, and that would be, let's see, uh, Alexis. Uh, Messias wants to know, do they help you sending, uh, do they, do they help you by sending money for you to live? You want <laughs> to take that question? Um, <laughs> no, we do not send Candace any money. Um, I'm pretty sure she has a job. So. I do. I do indeed. I work. <laughs> um, I work so my family does not. More than I do too. <laughs> I work so my family does not uh, does not support us financially. Um, so and and that's as that's as in depth as I get into my finances on social media. But I, I thought that that was uh, I thought that that was an entertaining question. I know it's come up before, so uh, I thought I'd get your reaction on that question. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Diana Martinez wants to know, would your little sister go visit you and your family in Mexico? So, sorry, I apologize. My, my dog. Um, we were talking about it prior and then obviously COVID and everything got pretty crazy. Um, but I think it's important. And I think that, um, I said I wasn't gonna cry. Um, one of the hardest parts of all of this, like because I see you and you come to the States and I see the boys, um, 
and I don't see the now, and that's been really hard. <laughs> see, I said I know, see, we're already crying in the beginning of the interview, guys. So get ready. Um, if you've never been to the panel before. I actually I cry a lot. <laughs> um, my little sister is not an exception. She talks about it all. Um, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, continue. So just knowing that, like, that's gonna, that would be our only way to see him, you know. And I want my little boy to know his his uncle and. So I think, um, although we've been like, we joke about it a lot and we've been postponing it for a long time, I think it's definitely something that, you know, needs to get rolling and get happening because that's important. <laughs> All right. It is I Next agree. <laughs> we can't move on because there's a couple other things that I want to touch on that. Um, but Diana, so the short answer to your question is yes, she absolutely would come to Mexico <laughs> uh, to visit. Um, but the the thing that I want to talk about though is that you I feel like you've done a really good job of still um, putting Fidel into your little boy's life and I don't I don't know if you want to say his name or not so I'm not you know that's up to you um, but I feel like you've done a really good job at at putting Fidel in his life via our phone conversations because we actually do uh, video chat quite often um, and with the kids and so I feel like do you feel like uh, do you feel like he recognizes Fidel at this point? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He said Teal before he said Tia. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, we don't have to tell everybody. <laughs> you know, he really did. He really did. He uh, uh, gets on the phone and says, Tio, Tio. So one of our goals is teaching him Spanish. So that's going really well. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. It's a work in progress. Um, but no, you're right. He did say, he did say Tio before Tia, which is a little bit of a knife to the heart for me, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so you do talk to him like every day, but he did say. That's true. That's true. So do you feel like, do you feel like even though with the distance that, that Xander and. Man. That's fine. His name is Xander. Sorry. It's so hard. All right. His name is Xander. I'm sorry. I totally was like, no, it's fine. You just. You let us know. So yeah, so my nephew's name is Xander. So moving on. Um, sorry, Nicole. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. It's okay. All right. Uh, do you feel like Xander and Fidel will uh, do and will continue to have a connection even though we're we're separated by countries? Oh yeah, absolutely. And Fidel always goes out of his way to, you know, if he sees we're on the phone together, he'll jump in and say hi. And, um, and yeah, just he's he's what a year and a half and he already recognizes him. So I think it's only upwards from here. And once he learns Spanish, which you got to work on those lessons, then, <laughs> then I'm sure their connection will be even stronger. Absolutely. I feel the same way. All right. So that was a, that was a long way of answering Diana's question, but Diana, thank you so much for the question. Um, and so Gracie, uh, Hinosa asked, have they met, uh, have they met baby in person since you had him in Mexico? Yeah, you came up. I have the photos. Uh, I think they were like 10 months old, nine months. I think they were around nine. Well, they were eight, between eight and nine months, I think, is where we, right. when we so came. I don't know if you, you've said this on social media, um, but uh, we actually got, our little boys are two weeks apart. So that was pretty fun for us to be pregnant together. So it was, I've only seen him in person once. He's not a big fan of the camera. You're a little boy. <laughs> so I try every time he walks by. Um, so yes, you guys came up. We spent oh, quite a while together, weeks. Yeah, well, um, I, and in the end, we were, uh, we were quarantined together. So for those of you that don't know, our last trip to the States uh, for, for me and the boys was um, two weeks before the, the United States completely shut down for COVID. Um, and... So I got up there and I, I saw some family in Utah. Well, I got to, I always fly in and out to Nicole's house. Uh, she's in a different state, but I got to see uh, family in Utah. And then um, the whole country shut down in the beginning of March and we were stuck in the midst of it. So I was quarantined with my mom, which was really nice. So hi mom. Um, <laughs> but it was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> She'll watch this. So, hey mom. Um, but it was nice to be quarantined with mom, but then it was nice to, uh, to be able to go back to your house where we were also quarantined and, and get more time with, with, uh, with you and your husband and Xander. Um, 
and do all of that. But I haven't actually talked a lot about that on social media. Um, with the fact that we, that we got pregnant with our boys, um, so close together. So we actually got to be pregnant together. Yeah. Completely unplanned. <laughs> Not planned. I think we we were both planning on it, but we just didn't know it was going to happen so close together. Happen so close together, yeah. Um, right. And so we had, you know, we, we got to experience the first time for us uh, being pregnant together because Xander's your first. Um, so we, we got to experience being pregnant together, but it was different because we were still apart and in two different right. countries. So how was that? How, I'm, I'm curious, what were, your, what were your takeaways from that or how, how did you feel about that experience? I think it was, well, it was huge for me because you had already had one, uh, Diego, years ago. So you kind you kind of remembered some of it. So I could constantly be like, oh, I heard this at this appointment or this at this appointment. And um, so you were able to be that sounding board for me um, with all my freakouts and really kept me calm as a new mom. Also, it was, I still... <laughs> I remember you pacing in the fields, like trying to go into labor. And then after you had him, I was like, thank God I'm having a C-section. I never have to do it. You got to do your birth story one day if they don't know, because that was crazy. Yeah, um, I haven't a birth story yet. No. <laughs> um, but I was just, it, it was really cool to have that experience with you. And also just to have our boys so close. I mean, Diego was the first in the family and we all obviously still adore and he was just like you know besides our older nephew but the first for us three to really have and first for mom and so obviously but then it's also pretty neat that our little boys like we're able to do this together you know and they'll right. just grow and be close because of age alone so that was also that's also pretty neat that we were able to do that I agree and I think uh too that our boys are so different mm -hmm. from each other. Xander and Dominic are polar opposites. I feel like yeah. um, Dominic will be the reasonable cousin <laughs> and well, Dominic like, uh, might be the so wild cool. child. Dominic's the wild child for sure. He'll be like, Xander, let's go, let's go do this. And Xander's like, oh, I don't know, we might be in trouble. Dominic's and like, Dominic will be like, no, we do it in Mexico all the time. It's fine. We're going to be just fine. Come on. Just like, we can do fireworks. We're oh, bored, but we got this. We got this. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. It'll, it, uh, it will be an adventure when they, um, as they grow together and to see their differences and how they balance each other out. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and two, just because we'll get to see, because they're so close in age, I feel like we'll get to see, um, how they interact with each other being raised in two completely different countries, okay. right. From, from the get go. So I think mean, that'll be really cool. I'm like, I'm, I'm excited for it. Also, they're both going to grow up to be amazing human beings. So, um, okay. well, they already are. So, <laughs> all right. So let's, let's check another question. Um, all right. Ava Garcia says, hello, I love your story of love and family. In the beginning of your relationship uh, with Fidel, was your family upset or cautious about you being with him because of him not having his papers? Um, what is your, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Um, you know my memory, but <laughs> I don't ever, I don't know if maybe when I was younger, I didn't, because where we grew up, I don't know if I understood fully what that meant, like not having your papers and um, what all of that like encompassed, but I never remember that like being an issue because I guess we always kind of just rely on you and your sound judgment of <laughs> experiences. Like you weren't worried, <laughs> you weren't wor worried. So like, I feel like you let me know if I was um, supposed to be worried, but mm -hmm. I don't remember that ever at least from my perspective, being a concern for me. Right. But it also could have been like a lack of knowledge. I don't know, but I don't see how that, me, for me personally, like a piece of paper that, you know, allows you to legally be in a country is a piece of paper. So <laughs> I know that can be, a, I know that can be a touchy subject, but I don't think, I guess what I'm trying to say is whether or not Fidel had the piece of paper would not have changed my opinion of him and his character. So. Right. That's a, that's a good answer. She's, she's really good at this. I also had a lot of coffee. Uh, no, but I, 
I don't remember at any point having anyone in our family, um, I think if anybody felt like it as far as our extended family, but I don't think um, our immediate family, I don't remember having anybody tell me, um, tell me that I was making a, a, a mistake or, or anything like that. I don't, I don't feel like that was ever a topic. I think you guys met Fidel, um, everybody was aware of, of the situation. It wasn't something that we hid from anybody. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that as far as my family goes, I think we were all raised not to judge somebody by um, outside factors and, and by them and their character. And so I think that, I think that that went a long way for, for how Fidel was, you know, accepted into our family and, and things like that. Right. And like you said, there could have been extended family that didn't agree or didn't feel that way, but the core of us and also they didn't say anything. So right. They, they kept it to themselves, yeah. which in yeah. hindsight is much appreciated. <laughs> <'Cause>... Right. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Anna Ruiz asked, um, has, has your perception changed of the Mexican culture or has your perception of the Mexican culture changed because of Fidel and I and our marriage and our family? Yeah, absolutely. I think I, like I said, growing up, we weren't really, because of where we grew up, we weren't exposed to a lot of different cultures where I am now, I am. But, um, so I think it was really eye-opening to have him around. And I, I, I saw pieces of the culture when you guys were here and we would, um, do things with his family or that kind of thing mm -hmm. or Fidel would talk about it but I think definitely you being in Mexico now and all the videos of all the things you guys are doing and we talk about you know it's this holiday or we're doing this or and how you kind of merged your culture and our traditions as a family into um, your life in Mexico has really been cool to see but definitely appreciation and definitely just um, an overall awareness i guess for people are people in similar situations to fidel's and what that means for them in the states and how how they're treated differently and i i guess just a more of an awareness um than i had before and it, it's constantly always learning and growing like anything um, right I'm like a culture i don't you know i didn't grow up around a, a lot of um so yeah I, I guess just an appreciation and a constant like about uh, self-evaluation of how are my decisions and what i'm doing impacting these people or how are things that are happening like covid and you know the elections and all of these things like how do these things impact these populations um and my right. neighbor so yeah absolutely absolutely and um you you bring up a good point that i don't think um, I've covered a lot of is that you and I, um, <clears throat> well, we grew up in a very, very small town in, in Utah. And so you're right. Culture wise, we weren't exposed to a lot of different cultures. <laughs> there, just, there wasn't a lot there. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> not to, uh, not to talk badly about it or anything, but, but it's true. We weren't, we weren't as children exposed to a lot of cultures. And so I think that as we grew up and we left that small town and uh, we, we kind of got out into the world, then we started to learn about um, all of these different cultures and we became more aware of what was going on in the world because because the way that we grew up, we were in kind of like a, a bubble, you know? That's, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but we were, we were kind of in a bubble until, until we were able to get out on our own. And so, um, so yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's definitely eye-opening. So uh, good question, Anna. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, let's see. Will your family go and visit you and bring, you fav bring your favorite goodies? Well, yes, because I'm not going to let them come down without that. Um. <laughs> Extra suitcase. <laughs> extra, extra suitcase. Extra suitcase. Um, let's see. Let me. Do you? Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. There's a lot. You guys did great at like putting a bunch of questions up here. Um, okay, Angie is, is uh, Esparza. Esparza wants to know. 
Um, what are your sister's thoughts on how the immigration system's laws are? And if she could change something about these laws, what would, what would they be? Not, not to put you on the spot or anything, Angie, that's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> how much can I say? How much can you cover in this? Uh, it's a soapbox for me. So <laughs> if I get derailed, we need like a coach. <laughs> No, I think I think that my audience is definitely ready for for this. So go. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, well, I mentioned before um, that I. Okay. Um, this is for anybody that's wondering. This is my sister's face when she's trying to formulate a diplomatic <laughs> and sensible response. Uh, <laughs> So as our mother always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So instead, I'm trying to, um, okay, no, in all seriousness, um, I, I have differing opinions of immigration policy. Also, I think those opinions have changed since becoming a mother. I think, well, I know that I, I would do anything for my little boy um, and for my little boy to have the best shot at life and the best shot at safety. And um, you know, if that means crossing a line that some people drew on a map hundreds of years ago, I don't know how many years ago, but I guess immigration, um, I've always struggled with how it was it, okay sorry i'm really like trying not to get on my soapbox um, oh, okay I, I i know that my audience is going to be sitting here watching this like just say it do it <laughs> i was born in the united states by no like fault or privilege or of my own like i did nothing to deserve to be born in this country just like my brother-in-law um, just happened to be born in Mexico. So why does it matter if he wants to come over here or if I wanna go over there? Like he had opportunities here um, that he didn't have there. So cool, come over here, you know, and get those opportunities, do what's best for you. I mean, you're not hurting anybody in the process. You're not, um, you're not crossing these lines to like be, you know, cause any pain on other people so why does it matter you come over here cool like we have plenty of resources and jobs and all of this like come join us is kind of my immigration policy like sure why not come help us out and if i want to come over there like let me over um i get that there's obviously more technical behind the scenes whatever with immigration but i think like if you have an opportunity to make your life better someplace else and the only thing that's stopping you is a piece of paper because you weren't born on this soil. Like, why should I have more rights because I was on this soil and you're not, that's not fair. And why am I any better of a person? Because I just happen to be born on this side of the line and you happen to be born on that side of the line. Like, and my kids should have different opportunities than your kids. Like, I don't know. See, so soapbox <laughs> <Get> down now. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go through that. Your tears started welling up and so did mine. <laughs> we need to, uh, see, that's twice. It is. The, well, the immigration system is, it's, it's hard. It's a beast. It's a beast to talk about. It's a beast to wrap your head around, uh, especially as an adult. Um, and I think that, that the, the difference too for you is that um, us going through it and being in it has definitely given you more of an inside view that I think a lot of Americans don't get. I think a lot of Americans are fed um, what the media and the government wants them to see about it, but there are a lot of things on the inside of it that you don't see that the public, the general public doesn't get to see. And so I think one of the advantages that, uh, I guess it's an advantage, but one of, one of the advantages that you have is that you've been able to see it on the inside because it's, it's, you've been directly affected by it because mm -hmm. it's your family, you know, Fidel's your family. I'm your family. These are your, your nephews, you know, all of, all of that <clears throat> definitely comes into play. But 
but it's a hard thing to talk about without, um, you always want to give a, I, for me, I always want to give a diplomatic answer, you know, and I want to, uh, because I think that that's how you get people to listen, but it's very hard um, for me, for sure, to talk about immigration without getting emotional because of, because it, you know, it's affected my family. So I don't, I don't, is that, is it the same for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, whenever anything, anything related to immigration gets brought up, which, yeah, um, I have to be very careful not to climb my soapbox, but, um, yeah, yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, next question, next question. Thank you, Angie, for that question. That was a, that was a good question. Um, You're going to have to do a follow-up. There's going to be so many. Like, what did she mean by this? Oh, I know. I, I know. I know. I know. Um, but I, I, but I get what you're saying. And, and um, I think you and I, the reason that we're so close is because we think a lot alike. And so when you, when you're presented with a question like that, um, like me, you want to scream and cry and, you know, point out all of these ugly things, but in your brain, you're like, okay, but I need to convey why in a sensible manner and and I want people to to hear my words and I think that when you when you get overly emotional I think that people stop listening to to what you're saying about it because it you know they're used to it being so black and white and we both know it's not it's definitely not black and white uh let's see let's see let's see oh <laughs> this one's fun uh Veronica Lopez question for your sister uh, what were you like growing up and what was your family dynamics? Did you and your sister get along growing up? Okay, there's an epic story, which she probably doesn't want me to tell, but I say it all the time. So growing up, we had one of those rotary dial phones that hung on the wall. And this thing was made out of like steel and wood. I don't even know. It did it. It worked, right? Yeah, it worked. It worked. But not that old. Like, I don't know why we had it. Just something our dad had. Yeah. Um. But this story encompasses mine and Candace's relationship perfectly. <laughs> I probably was just being a perfect little angel and Candace got fired up about me for something, but I remember running and this phone just coming and hitting me in the between the shoulder blades and just falling to the ground. Okay, Candace wasn't like abusive. Um, besides that incident. Yeah, let's clarify that. First off, we were sisters. We were like, teens or preteens at that point yeah, she leaves a lot out of the story um i remember i remember you getting upset hitting me with your jacket the zipper caught my lip and cut my lip i, know. I remember going in to call mom and as i was dialing on the oh, phone I continued <laughs> to say something and i got i got upset and so but it was still connected to the cord so the yeah, best so of it, yeah it was still connected to the cord. So as I was dialing, Nicole continued. And uh, sorry, guys, I, you might be able to hear the tortilla guy. But anyway, um, and you continued. And so as I was holding the phone, which is attached to the box uh, itself, I remember throwing it, hitting you in the back. And then the phone came back, essentially <laughs> like a boomerang, because it was hooked to the cord. Uh, <laughs> and then you were crying, and I was crying. And we were both upset. Um, and that, uh, that, yeah, is one of your favorite stories to tell, but you leave out so many details of that story every time you tell it. And I always sound like the bad guy. No, uh, but, but to, to be fair, there was three of us. You're two years older than me. Uh -huh. We have a little sister that's one year younger than me. So we were all really close. We all like had compli like complicated relationships because we're three girls in a house. Um, I don't know if you've like talked much about our family, but there was the three of us. Our parents got divorced when I was in eighth grade. So you were in yeah. sixth grade? Uh huh. Yep. And yeah, it was us. Our mom works a lot. Um, I don't know if you've talked about her profession or anything like that. No. Um, well, I've, I've told them that she's a nurse. Yeah. Our mom's a yeah. nurse, by the way. <laughs> our mom's a nurse. So, yeah. um, sorry, my dogs. Yeah, so mom worked a lot. Um, we were, yeah, we had complicated relationships, but as we grew up and got more mature and in more Not control physical violence against each other, uh. <laughs> I think we really got close after. So there was a period, and you may have to correct um, some of this, 
there was a period after high school, right before college, where um, I was, I wasn't, our, our mom was um, in a new relationship and um, I was, so I was kind of in between places. Um, mom was moving in um, with our stepdad now. now and so. I was just like in this weird spot in between. So anyway, I'm trying to speed this up. So your you're listeners. fine. <laughs> so I went to come live with you and Fidel and Diego and Diego was a tiny little chunk. And you guys, um, looking back at that, like if I was Fidel, I would not have let my 18 year old sister come move in with us. But um, you guys really took me in and let me live there. And I was trying to find a job. I was trying to do all these things. I ended up going home and going back to, and going to college. But I think that's really where our relationship started. Um, we had some rocky patches after then, after that, because I was young and dumb. Um, but I think <laughs> the older we get, the closer we get. <laughs> you just had to get through like your early 20s. The early 20s yeah. are always a little. <laughs> Those are rough for me. Um, <laughs> Those, I think they're rough for everybody because I think for for adults, I think that's your selfish period. It really right. is, though, if you think about it. So mm -hmm. it's your selfish period. It's when you it's when you only think about yourself. <laughs> it's those early twenties. Yeah, yeah. Um, but even I, I and I also think like since you've moved, we've gotten a lot closer because mm -hmm. because for one, like you're working from home, so you're always available to me. And if you're not, I just keep calling until you are. And so that's been really helpful for me. <laughs> um, and now we talk almost every day. Mm -hmm. So I actually think you moving has brought us a lot closer because now we are forced to communicate through this mode instead of being like, oh, I'll see her in a couple. I'll see her in a couple weeks, or I'll see her in a couple weeks. You know, now it's yeah. like. I don't know when I'm going to see her, so I'm going to call her right now. I can call her 12 times. Yeah. And then you answer the phone, are you dead? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Did somebody die? Yes. That would be the only reason that you're calling me incessantly like this. <laughs> nope, just wanted to see what's up. <laughs> no, just, uh, just see it. I'm just sitting here, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I honestly, I feel like, um, and, and this is probably where I'll cry, um, but I feel like, we were getting uh, closer and closer um, because you were wrapping up school. Um, I was wrapping up, well, I was, I had wrapped up my undergraduate. I was getting ready to start my master's. And, um, and honestly, for me, um, you know, I had, I had Hatch, who's my, my best friend. For those of you that don't know, that's my best friend in Utah. Um, and Nicole was already living out of state. And so when Fidel was arrested, and when he was detained by immigration, um, for me, I heavily, heavily relied on, I think in particular you and Hatch while, while I was going through it. I, um, I don't know if you remember, but we would talk every day when I was on my way home from work every single day. Um, and it was the drive between leaving work and picking up Diego, which was usually about, I don't know, like 30 minutes, I think is what it was. Um, and I would, I would put you on my Bluetooth in my car. I was so proud of that car. Um, I put you on my Bluetooth in that, in my car. And I literally, we would, we would talk every day and it was the, I remember always feeling like that portion of driving home was like the hardest thing to get through because I knew that I had to, I could no longer focus on work. And I knew that I was having to pick Diego up and I didn't, I never knew because we were going through so much and Diego was going through so much. I never knew what I was going to pick, what condition he was going to be in when I picked him up from daycare, you know, and, and Diego had a really hard time. Like the rest of us, Diego had a really hard time when we were, when we were going through it. And so, um, I remember that on the days that we didn't get to talk, which was very, very, very seldom. Um, that it took everything that I had driving home not to completely fall apart in my car so that Diego didn't realize that I was falling apart, you know? Um, and so I think for me, that's where, um, for me, I feel like that's where our dynamic really shifted. And like it was, it was already good and it was a good sister relationship, but I feel like that's when we, that's when we really shifted. And, and I think I relied on you a lot for, for emotional support 
um, while everything was happening with, with Fidel's case. So that was a, it was a rough time for all of us. Yeah, I remember like, you have any updates? Uh, nope. Just still calling around, calling this. Oh, got to call this number. Nope. Dead ends. Got to call this number. Like you navigating that system that had no map to navigate. Yep. Um, and it was then when we talked about like you doing something like this and you like being able to like, I say like a lot, <laughs> you be able to kind of give people, give people the tools that you had or that you didn't have, that you had to build and had to do numerous phone calls to track down like where he was or how to get this information to this person. And it was just so many dead, dead ends and so many frustrated, endless calls. And, and I remember how broken it left you. Like, if you can't figure this out and you're from here and you have a master's degree and you have all of these resources, you have family, you have, you know, um, all these people to help you and you can't figure out the system how does anybody else figure out this system you know yeah that's, like, so that's where you where you got the idea to do all of this and um where you started that and yeah I, now you've got me like down a rabbit hole of those memories but um yeah it was a rough time no it's good because i think so part of what you know i found out and and we've discussed is is the overwhelming amount of families that are in this situation that are in not in this exact situation obviously but in a similar situation and i think it's good for them to hear you know especially your take on it because you were you were close to the situation but you weren't living in it you know well you kind of were living in it with me um but but you were close enough to the situation but you were still kind of on the outside and so i think that when we're going through it, or at least when I was going through it, you know, um, I've talked a lot about on, on my platform about how, you know, my family was incredible and how you guys did such a great job at supporting me and supporting Diego was like, you guys took care of Diego. There's no doubt about that. But um, I think that a lot of times we get so lost because we're so focused on what's going on that we don't really know how our family's feeling about it or what, you know, their perception is and, and what they're going through or what they see from, from their point of view. I, you know, I, I remember a week after, a week after he was picked up is when you were married. I remember coming down to your house and you got married and, uh, man, I remember how hard it was just to keep it all together. But at no point did I, um, did I feel guilty at your wedding, at your big, beautiful day for, uh, you know, for dancing with Diego and crying the whole time that I was dancing with him, you know, uh, because I just felt like you guys were supportive and, and you knew that even though it was your, it was your big day that, uh, that I wasn't, I probably wasn't going to make it through without crying or falling apart at some point, you know? So I think it's, I think it's good for, for people in this situation to, to get to see that perspective, you know, and, and to know it. And, and even if there are any people out there watching who have family that's going through this, you know, how, how do you, I guess I, I, it, I want to ask a question and then I'll go back into more questions, but if you could, if you could give any family member an advi advice, um, if they, you know, were in your shoes, essentially, you know, they had a, a sibling or a family member that was going through this, if you could give them any piece of advice, what would it be? Um, I know on the spot, it's cause I'm I know, so right? <laughs> I think you and I've always had this balance of you're strong when I'm not, I'm strong when you're not kind of back and forth. Um, like I have chronic illness um which thankfully i haven't had any symptoms of since you yes. left I'm you not sure how I handle that. Um, <laughs> but like when i'm sick and when i'm when i was having a hard time you were strong for me and so i think me trying to be strong for you um involves me involves choosing my words carefully <laughs> um sometimes because there were so many times when i just wanted to be fired up and angry with you and what the system was doing to him and 
see you brought up all these memories now. <laughs> um, it was hard. So I hope that I was that for you in like the ways you were that for me. So maybe I guess that would be my word of advice. Um, pull it together even when you don't feel like you have it together because they may need that strength, They, you know, that they don't have right now. Um, and then it gets better. <laughs> it gets better. Um, I hope. I, I mean, I can't like encompass that for everybody, but there were some points where I, I was terrified. I was so terrified for him. And I think that was the hardest part for me of all of this. Like you living in another country, cool. Like <laughs> easy my, <peasy. laughs> my nephews being thousands and thousands of miles away. We can make that work. Um all of that, but um <laughs> see <it> was, <laughs> all your comments are gonna be like, you guys cry a lot. <laughs> I don't. She's That's okay. That. We found um, you in the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to cry. She's like, <laughs> but that was definitely, and that's still the hardest part for me about what he had to go through. And that was completely unnecessary. Um, and how, in spite of all that, Fidel is the same guy he was since day one. You know, like he never let any of that change his character. He never let any of that, like, make him jaded. He'll never speak ill about you know, the systems and the, you know, that in this country and whatever, like, it's just, Fidel just takes it as like, this is something I had to go through, but it never, not that he had to, you know what I mean? Um, but it never, it never changed him. It never changed him. But um, yeah, now it's uh, all these memories of that was, that was definitely, and the hardest part was knowing that. Yeah. Sorry. Got a little off track. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. And, and, um, but I will bring up, I will bring up a happy memory for you. Um, which is one of my favorite, favorite things that, uh, it was like the, it was the light in the middle of all of the darkness that I felt like was surrounding Diego and I for that entire time. And, and Fidel, um, was, that you guys decided to take Diego for, what was it? Was it a month or like almost the whole summer, right? Yeah, a month at least, yeah. Yeah, so you guys, uh, you and your husband, and obviously this was prior to Xander, um, but you and your husband took Diego uh, to your state. And, and I know that there were some summer packet issues, right? Um, but, but. <laughs> But, <laughs> but other than the summer packet issues, I remember you guys took him on a trip to California, right? Mm -hmm. um, he got to experience Legoland, which he'd never done before. And my child got to go to the beach for the very first time in his life and see the ocean. And I remember you sent a video. I mean, it's probably still on Instagram. So if I can find it, I'll pull it and put it on, on, oh, yeah. on my Instagram for these guys. Um, but he... When it was when he was running to the waves and then running back and then, you know, and, uh, and I just remember thinking like, oh, like how grateful I was because, um, there were very few moments that I got to see Diego that happy while all of this was, was going on. And so I just remember how grateful I was. So that's a good memory that you can, now that we're dredging up all of this stuff for you. <laughs> That you can hold on to, and we and we don't have to get into the summer packets if you don't want to. <laughs> that darn summer packet. I did everything to get that kid to finish that summer packet. Um, no, that was a fun. That was a fun trip. Yeah, we went to Legoland. We went to the zoo. It was really, it was a really cool opportunity for my husband and him to get a lot of bonding in. Um, right. My husband's always thought of him as, you know, since day one. Like it's just our Diego. You know, it's our dude. Um, and Diego spent a lot of summers with us since then, mm -hmm. um, a lot of time in the summer and we always, look, we always look forward to those, but that trip in particular was, was really fun. And we have a lot of pictures and videos. So I'll have oh, videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Him seeing the sand and, or the beach. And then at some point it was like, he was not a fan of that sand. <laughs> He's like, we can go now. I was like, okay, go. I'm done. <laughs> It was cool to experience that with him because Diego's a very cautious kid. 
Mm -hmm. He gets that from me. Um, <laughs> he really so he didn't want to approach it at first. And then once he realized like what it was, he was just giggling so hard. And yeah, it was, it was just, it was a really fun trip. My husband always still talks about Lego land. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he and still does too. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, were some good memories. That was a lot of fun. That's awesome. <sighs> All right. So, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Trying to pull another question. Um, let's see. A lot of these, I'm, I'm sorry that it's taking me, a, a lot of them are the same questions that you've answered. So, um, <clears throat> but I appreciate everybody getting on and, um, and asking these questions. Uh, oh, somebody asked if you were single yeah. or if I had any single sisters. So, he's married. All my sisters are, are all uh, paired up already. I apologize for anybody that gets disappointed by that. I also don't have any cousins that I'm aware of um, that are looking for a significant other at this point. Um, <laughs> but you'd be surprised at how often I get that. Uh, do you have any sister questions and, and are they married? Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, so that, that pretty much sums up the questions that we got um, from users. But the other thing that I wanted to ask you about, um, and that because you and I have discussed before, there, I mean, you know that negativity comes with the territory when it comes to putting your life on, on social media. Not that that should justify it in any way, but it, it does. It's something that you have to expect. Um, <clears throat> but I think something that I have struggled with and that I've relied on you a lot for is, um, mom shaming when it, when it comes to Diego in particular, um, and comments like you've, you've ruined his life or you've ruined his future and, and that. So from your perspective, especially because of the, of the education background that you have from your perspective and knowing Diego, how do you feel he has dealt with this change and, um, do you feel like he's happy? Do you feel like he's thriving? And do you have any concerns from the outside looking in on, on, on him or his future regarding him or his future? Um, so in the beginning, it was a little rough for him to get adjusted, which comes with moving anywhere, you know, moving anywhere, new place, new people, new friends. Right. So I was a little worried about him in the beginning, um, just making that adjustment. Mm -hmm. Um, because he's such a social kid. He always like, he always loves being around people and kids and he's just so friendly and outgoing. And I kind of wondered, but, but he had also like grown up and been around like the same knit of us, you know, he wasn't, he never had to move before. Right. So it, I'm sure that the experiences that he had and all of that would have just come with any new territory. Right. So, but in the beginning, I, I was kind of worried that it would like um, make him less social or make him, you know, it kind of like damper his spirit a little in a way, just right. because like kids anywhere can be rough and cruel to each other. So um, that was hard in the beginning, but I, I think I, I, that question, it makes me laugh a little because they're there's always going to be, like you said, with our little boys growing up together, um, but in different countries, mm. there's always going to be advantages and disadvantages to being in any area. Um, but there are things I definitely, I wish that my little boy had that Diego and Dominic get to experience, you know? Mm. Um, if I think like a lot of kids don't get the opportunities that Diego has now to be outside, to be playing, to be have fresh air, to have friends to play with. So much is done online and social media, especially now with the pandemic. Kids are locked up, kids are cooped up inside and we know what that does to mental health and we know what that does to development. Um, not to go into like my background too much, but um, the opportunities he has there, I think are really shaping him. And I think as, as parents, his parents, like, I would give anything to have my little boy to be able to play outside eight hours a day. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> when is his work done? Um, and, right. just, and Dominic gets to be out in the field with the animals and his dad, and they get to experience different cultures and 
different people and like what that does for a kid, a growing kid and what that does for their brain and their muscle development and their coordination just to be out and playing and, mm-hmm. um, and all the research points to like how many hours a day kids need outside. And I think that's something that, um, that your boys really have an advantage on of kids, most kids in the United States. I mean, there's obviously exceptions. Um, I know I have no doubt about Diego's development. Every once in a while when you're yelling about him for school, but I think all parents are dealing with that right now. Like, just get your score. Just get it done. Diego's doing it. It did in the beginning. I think in the beginning for us, the hardest adjustment for Diego was adjusting him to taking school online and doing it online. I mean, that was the hardest adjustment for me. I know that was Diego and I's biggest battle. Um, And while now he does good at his school and he's ahead and and all of that and all good things. Um, he is still 11 years old. And so I still have to, you know, it's still a battle some days to get him to sit down and especially writing assignments, can't get that kid to do writing assignments for (laughs) me. Right. So it's really, it's, it's, yeah, I get that. So, um, to, to kind of wrap up and that I guess the last thing that, um, that I would like is, Um, I guess, can you give these guys an idea of um, your feelings about Fidel? And if you have any favorite memories or or things like that, just uh, just give them an idea of, um, because there is, for you and Fidel, there is a definite language barrier like there is for most of you guys in my family, because nobody speaks Spanish in my family, right? Um, So I guess give these guys, I say these guys, like where you guys are already out there watching, but you are now, um, but give these guys, I guess, like your opinion of Fidel, your thoughts, uh, your feelings towards him and, and some of your favorite things. Just, yeah. Okay. So I was like, thought I was done crying. <laughs> I'm going to do this without crying. Um, All right. like I said, Fidel took me in when he shouldn't have, and I was terrible. Um, so Fidel, it, even my extended family, so my extended, my husband's family knows Fidel and knows Fidel's character and asks about Fidel. And he's just one of those people that just has an impact on you, I guess. Um, Fidel has always went out of his way to help other people. He has fixed my car more times than I could count. Um, and if he wasn't there to fix my car, he tried to tell me how to fix it. Um, I remember you guys came up to the visit one time and the whole time he was out fixing my car and Andrew's car. And this is when I was really sick and we were broke. Like I couldn't afford to take my car in. Um, I was barely paying rent um, with the help of family. And he spent his whole trip um, fixing our cars. And so he, he's just that person. He's just, he's always, um, he's always down to help anybody. He never lets anything change who he is or his character after being through that whole experience um, with the immigration system. I don't know how anybody wouldn't carry a chip on their shoulder, but he doesn't. It's just like, okay, we're doing this now. We're going to make the best of it. And this is how it's going to work. And I know he misses us. And um, I know it must be hard for him not to come when you guys come and how hard it was when you guys were up here and Dominic took his first steps and Fidel couldn't be there. Um, so those trips are hard, but I think, um, I don't know. I just, I love the, I love the shit out of that guy. <laughs> I just love him. <laughs> and he's always, I don't know. He's just always been like my big brother, my like protector. So I know he'd do anything for me that he would, I don't know. I don't know what I could, I don't know what I could ask him that he wouldn't do for me. <laughs> he <laughs> would grab a few dollars, Fidel. He'd be like, uh, let me figure it, give me a couple days. Let me figure, <laughs> let me figure it out. Uh, um, oh, but the language barrier, the language barrier. Um, I mean, you're always there to translate most of the time. And <laughs> Fidel, uh, uh, you can get the gist of what Fidel's saying. Right. And he gets the gist of what I'm, and he understands what I'm saying. So we've always had this like jumbled interpreter, 
<laughs> body language way of communicating. Um, <laughs> Lots of hands. Because, like he loves me so much. Like <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's it just works. So uh, Nicole is convinced that she is Fidel's favorite sister. Oh. It's not even like a competition. Don't tell my other sisters or yeah, anyone don't, else. Don't tell, uh, don't tell our other sister. Or uh, Fidel's sisters. Like, I'm just the best. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think Fidel's always kind of, because the time he came into our life, I was, you know, having a rough time and I got sick and I've been dealing, like, you know, I was dealing with that chronic illness for a long time and I was trying to go to school and do all these things. And so Fidel's kind of always like, come on, Nicole, we got this, you know, kind of just always helped me out. So I think I, I think I have a spot in his heart for that. Like, you probably do, but I mean, for technical reasons, we can't call you his favorite sister-in-law because there is a, (laughs) there is a good chance that our other sisters will watch this and we're not singling anybody out. Michelle and Chelsea, you watch this. Um, you know how Nicole is. She's just, you know, she's always, she's always going to be number one. Anyway, uh, no, so, uh, so first, thank you for doing this. I know it's not an easy thing to talk about. It's never an easy thing to talk about what, what we all went through, um, when Fidel was detained. But, um, but I think that, I think that you guys out there asked some great questions. Um, if you want us to do another, uh, interview talk thing or whatever, if you want to drop questions go ahead and drop them and the questions uh we can absolutely do this again um it did take us a couple weeks to get this set up so um but we can absolutely do this again uh for for all of you um but it's it's nice to be able to i think show my audience um my amazing family and why um and and why moving to mexico wasn't as scary as as it could have been because i um I had the support of, of amazing people like, like this chick right here. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, is there anything else that you want to, to say to the land of, of YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, because they, they come from, from all over to watch the, watch the video. Is there anything that you want to, anything else you want to say to them? Um, I think that I, and we can, I think I struggled with my support of this in the beginning with like you going to social media and all of this. I, I knew your mission. I was worried about your safety. I was worried about, um, um, the terrible things people can say. So I guess the last thing I like, just be nice to people. If you have terrible things to say, you can say them about me, but Candace is a softie, so. <laughs> oh, listen, I was the one who called you and said, listen, if we do this, you just have to promise me you're not going to read through the comments. Oh, I won't. I'm going to, no, <laughs> no. Hurt people hurt people, so. Hurt nobody people hurt people. Nobody's going to get me. I'm good. good. We're both good, right? Both good. It hasn't stopped yeah. me. Be nice to each other. That's Be nice right. to each <laughs> other. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. I, I hope that you enjoyed getting to know my little sister, Nicole. Um, drop your questions below. Let me know what other questions you have for, for her and for us. Um, we can definitely do this again if you guys really like it. Uh, bring in some other family members. Uh, spice things up a little bit. Uh, you can watch us all uh, fight as sisters. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, please drop your, your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. Follow on all the social medias. And above all else, have an amazing day and a happy, happy holiday from from our family to yours. So, bye guys. Bye.